The following program is made possible by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo, the next stage. He started off as a cop, now he's directing traffic at a $2.8 billion enterprise known as San Mateo County. The game is government, the game is on. I'm Mark Simon, welcome to the game. My partner, Kevin Mullen, is on assignment. In November, San Mateo County Manager John Malty, Malty will retire and Mike Callagy will take over management of a county government with an annual budget of $2.8 billion and 5,500 employees. A native of San Mateo County and a resident of Foster City, Mike began his career in public service as a police officer in San Mateo. In San Mateo. Over a 29-year career, he rose to the rank of deputy chief before joining the county in 2013 as one of the three deputy county managers. In 2016, he was named assistant county manager, and on July 6th, the county board of supervisors named him as the new incoming county manager. Welcome, Mike Callagy. Thank you, Mark. Congratulations. Um, Thank you. Talk about the job of county manager and how you see it. How, uh, what is it gonna mean to you to be serving as county manager? Well, it's an honor and a privilege uh, to serve as county manager. We, you know, we've got the greatest uh, county in the country here uh, with 5,500 plus um, dedicated public servants who are really there every day to make life better, to deal with those quality of life issues, to be that safety net for our, um, our uh, residents in this county. And they do a fantastic job. Leading that uh, type of organization is just a, a dream come true for me. Um, I'm also get to work with an incredible board of uh, supervisors who are so dedicated um, to quality of life issues and, and to really making this the best county possible. Um, and it's some of, some of the supervisors I've known for a long time and, and some I'm, I'm getting to know a lot better. Mm -hmm. You went through an extensive process, uh, the selection process. I know they interviewed people from all over the, the country in the Bay Area. Um, tell us sort of how you won the job. What was the case you made? Um, because sometimes, you know, it's, you're never a prophet in your own land. Right. I mean, there's a temptation to pick somebody who's new and different rather than the one you know. So how did you make your case? What was the case you made? Well, you know, for me, uh, I'm a known, uh, you know, commodity in this county. I've been around a long time. Uh, I've uh, had the opportunity, great opportunity to collaborate uh, with, uh, you know, across uh, different sections of this county um, in developing some strong and, and great partnerships with our nonprofits, um, with, uh, you know, law enforcement community, um, with our, 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 our mental health community. And, and really, um, I think that was, uh, that played a pivotal role. Um, the fact that I've worked for the county for five years and, and, uh, and really came in um, with eyes wide open. Um, it, it, the breadth and the depth of the county is amazing and I've had an opportunity to work under John Malpe, um, you know, who's probably the most incredible leader you can ask to work under uh, for the last five years. Uh, and I really got to know the organization. And hopefully um, I've been able to make a difference in the last five years. I think maybe the board uh, had an opportunity to see that. But I assume they asked you, what are your priorities gonna be? What are your sort of top goals and objectives? What, what are they? What did you yeah. tell them? I mean, we, there's so many, uh, but let's start to talk about some of those. Um, you know, the preservation of our workforce is, is, is paramount to de the delivery of services to all those who need it. And, and uh, you know, these are the best of times and the worst of times. Uh, we live in a very, very expensive place. Um, and uh, attracting employees here and re retaining them is absolutely crucial. So we've got to look at that. We've got a succession plan. We've got to make sure that we have those people pieces in place for the future. Um, you know, dealing um, with, um, with the, the housing crisis is, is a big, big issue in, in this county for not only our employees, but for everyone. And you can't talk about housing without talking about transportation. And, and they go hand in hand now. Um, and, and getting, uh, you know, being a player in that, in that regional game of, of really looking at this regionally and trying to figure out how we're going to move people uh, around in this county is, is so important. 
Um, you know, dealing with quality of life issues in this county is, uh, is uh, very important too. I mean, we've got, uh, we're a very prosperous county with, with a, a great deal of wealth, but we still have a lot of people who are struggling every single day. Being that safety net for them is so important. Um, making sure we maintain that high quality of life and, and uh, maintain, a, uh, maintain our resources is, is critical. Uh, we're going through right now a, a $500 million capital campaign where we're, we're, we're building things around the county, things that we've needed for a long time. And I've had the, the privilege of, of overseeing that for the last uh, several years. Yeah. You mentioned dealing with, with, you were specific about transportation, dealing with that issue re regionally, but I, I would imagine a lot of these issues have a regional component to them. San Mateo County has always sort of had this reputation of being a quiet place that's not a regional player. Is that something that you think we ha you have to assert now that San Mateo County has to sort of step onto the, the regional stage in a way it hasn't before? I, I, I absolutely think so. I think that we've done a fantastic job throughout the years collaborating uh, together in this county across cities in the county um, we, on, a, on a multitude of levels. We really have to step outside that now and expand that and, and uh, be one of the main regional players in this area. And, uh, you know, all the... All the housing appears to be out in, in the valley. Uh, all the jobs seem to be here. We've got to figure out a way regionally, um, you know, Santa Clara, San Francisco, uh, Alameda, um, all the players out there and our, and, our, and our colleagues in the valley to get a transportation system up and running that uh, is quick, reliable, um, that'll allow people to move back and forwards uh, in, a, in a timely manner. I mean, a lot is at stake when you talk about transportation in this county. We've not really historically be, been in that form. Yeah. You, you live in Foster City. I so, do. So you're acutely aware of what traffic can be like, right? I, absolutely. You know, it's, a, it's really four miles on the freeway. Sometimes it takes me, you know, 50 plus minutes uh, to go from Redwood City to, to Hillsdale Boulevard. I mean, it is out of crawl. I mean, I, I'm really thinking about uh, a biking to work. Uh, you ah. know, I think I'd get there a lot quicker and home a lot quicker. And it's healthier for you. It's absolutely um, healthier, yeah. Going back to the decision to pick you, um, a, a critical mind uh, could say, well, you were the safe choice that you're basically were prepared for the job by your predecessor, uh, that you're unlikely to be someone who's going to do anything bold and new and different. Uh, what do you say to that? Well, I think if you look throughout my career, I've, uh, I've always been a risk taker. Um, and um, I, I believe in advancing government. I've never been one to sit by idly and, and just uh, go along with the status quo. I think we have a responsibility in government to really um, um, progress and progress steadily and to uh, be innovative in everything we do. And I think that's certainly one of the things that I'm gonna be promoting as a county manager, innovation in government. Um, we wanna look for the best way to serve our customers. We wanna look for the, for the, uh, the best te technology that we can uh, use to make sure that they have a good experience. We wanna collaborate. Um, you know, there's a lot of things to collaborate on um, and a lot of areas that we can still go into. And, and you know, one of the things that I've always promoted uh, as, a, as in my police world was a consolidation of resources so we can leverage those resources and those precious tax dollars to get the biggest benefit for the public. We're going to take a quick break. You stick around. You do the same. We'll be right back. It's been over 150 years since Wells Fargo First opened for business. Since then, we've enjoyed your community support and we're passionate about returning it. Every day, Wells Fargo team members roll up their sleeves and donate their time to organizations and charitable groups throughout the Bay Area. Nationally, we've committed even more. In just the past two years alone, we've donated over $70 million to support schools and educational programs. It's a commitment we're proud of. Wells Fargo, the next stage. Welcome back. We're joined by Mike Callagay on November 1. He becomes the new county manager for this county of San Mateo. Uh, you started off as a, as a police officer a long time ago. Um, how, did you, you know, how did you like that? I mean, because you, you stayed in it, you moved up the ranks, and as we all know, uh, you start off thinking, I love this job because you're out dealing with people directly. The farther up you go, the less you're actually a police officer, the more you are an administrator and a manager of other police officers. So 
What did you like about that job, and what did you like about moving up in the ranks? Well, you know, that was not my uh, initial career path that I, that I wanted to take. You know, my, my whole thing of getting into policing was to go in uh, as a young officer straight out of college, get some experience, uh, become a lawyer, and then go on to the DA's office. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I, I got in there as a young officer, absolutely loved it. Um, it was challenging every single day. Um, I was started in narcotics as a young, uh, working undercover in narcotics as a young officer. Uh, loved it. Had to had to leave it for a period of time. I went to law school. Um, you know, got out of law school, passed the bar, and uh, I couldn't leave. Yeah. Mark, I loved it so much. I was back in narcotics. It was during the the crack cocaine epidemic. I really felt I was doing something positive uh, for society. Um, and uh, you know, worked gangs and then progressed up the. Um, uh, up uh, the chain to uh, a sergeant working robbery homicide and, and uh, then a captain, uh, you know, it's a captain of 15 years on. Um, and for the last 15 years of my career or so, I was in management, uh, totally different than being a street cop or, or working uh, those details. But I always said if Steve Wagstaff could prosecute cases as the, uh, as the assistant DA, uh, I could certainly work cases as a captain or a deputy police chief. Yeah. Um, so I kept my hand in it, but it was tremendous. You'd go out on patrol once in a while, or uh, absolutely roll on a bus or something like that. Absolutely, I would take cases on. You know, yeah. I would I would investigate cases every now and then because uh, you know I wanted to stay in touch with what the officers were doing. I wanted to never forget where where I came from, um, and I really felt uh, you know value. I felt that you know as an attorney I could um, you know bring uh, extra value to uh, to those investigations and. Um, and I really felt like I was doing something positive. And then leading an organization and, and working, uh, you know, with Chief Manheimer uh, it was a great experience. Uh, the, leading the day-to-day -day operations at San Mateo, working with so many great men and women who were dedicated to to public safety and to and to really community um, community service and community policing and all those things that came along. It's uh, it was an honor, an absolute honor to work at San Mateo Police Department. What did you like most about being a patrol? Uh Officer. The, the absolute variety and, and the thought of... You meet interesting people. Some of them are dangerous, but at least they're interesting. But even those people are interesting because they all have a story to tell, right? Yeah. They all, um, and you know, if you, it, was, it amazed me how willing they were able to, to uh, talk and, and tell you what happened to them, why they went down that path. Um, but I loved the variety. I loved the fact that you could um, see the best and worst of humanity in a single shift. Um, some of the calls you would go on where, where there'd be people helping other people and then other, other calls where people would be taking such advantage of other people and um, you would see people in their best times and in their absolute worst times and you were there to, to help them. You were there to be that shoulder to cry on um, and, and not knowing what the next call would, would be you know, every second of the day was uh, exhilarating and being challenged every day mm -hmm. was exhilarating. Um, I, you know, I, I loved it. I loved it every single day. Yeah. You know, and, it's, and it comes out, the passion you had for it. So you're 29 years in, I assume you, you were sufficient for retirement from, uh, from law enforcement and you make the jump to county government. Um, and it doesn't look like it's one follows the other. I could see you making the jump to the DA's office, I suppose. Sure. But, um, how different was it and what was the thinking behind that? Well, I was about three months shy of 30 years. I was starting to, to, to look around. I was looking for a different challenge and uh, I was lucky enough uh, um, to have a conversation with uh, John Malpe, who was looking for something very unique uh, in, a, in a deputy can, a county manager, and that was someone to help coordinate the criminal justice system in the county. It had never been done before, um, and this was a completely um, new position, um, uh, and, and I was able to, to walk into it uh, Really surrounded by the people I grew up with, you know, the 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 DAs, the uh, probation, um, the many people in the courts, you know, our our uh, our human services agency, um, our uh, our medical team, and, and really help coordinate the criminal justice system. It was a great thing because when I walked in the first day at work, I remember walking in, there wasn't a piece of paper in the office, there wasn't <laughs> anything on the computer, and it was a job that I got to really uh, create and, and run with. So coordinate, what do you mean, coordinate? What, what, were they acting as independent entities and not coordinating like 
regional task forces on certain challenges? I mean, what, what, how did you end up defining the job? Well, it was really interesting because I was coming in at a great time, really the perfect time. Uh, it was during realignment and you know, probably one of the biggest changes in the criminal justice system in, in recent history um, with, the, with the advent of, of AB 109. Realignment was where people could serve felony s sentences in county jail rather than going to prison greatly reduce the number of people in the state prisons, which are under a federal order to do that, but also uh, dramatically increases the number of felons who are in the county jail, changes the whole nature of the whole system, really. Really, so the, the non-serious, non-sexual, um, non-violent cases that would, would, would have gone to state prison were now staying in the county jail. And it gave us a great opportunity to bring all those resources together with, you know, with health, with uh, our human services agency, with probation, um, with the DA's office, with the courts, and, and really look at um, how are we going to lower the recidivism rate. It was interesting to look at those who are using our services on the, the human services side of things and, and the health side of things and, and, and those recidivists that were coming in and out of jail and see that connection. And there's a strong connection there. We had an opportunity now to go in and create a system that would really reduce that level of recidivism by providing coordinated resources uh, to them. And, and you know, I give a lot of credit to our sheriff's office. They've done a terrific job um, of really on the, in the, on the intake process where um, they are evaluated, evaluated. Everyone who comes in that jail are now evaluated from the day they come in and they have a plan all the way through to the exit point where they can be, upon you know, exiting, they can be immediately offered a job through Service Connect uh, and and be working the day after they get out of jail. And so provide it was to turn jail into a set of, rather than just simply incarceration, you're making a whole new stream of programs available. Absolutely, and uh, Sheriff uh, Balanis has done a wonderful job of that. We've got a whole new um, uh, uh, set of programs now in place to occupy, uh, and not only occupy the time, but, but make it meaningful time to deal with drug and alcohol addiction, um, to learn skills in, in uh, um, cooking or, or food prep areas, and so many other, um, you know, the Choices program, so many different programs in jail. You can get your, your GED in, in jail and even start college classes at a local you know, institution here, where before they would go off to state prison, they'd come right back into the same neighborhood, with, with no skills, no money, and put right back in, this, in the same situation with mental health or, or addiction issues. Well, they, they have skills, and maybe, maybe just not the ones we wanted them to have. We're gonna take a quick break. Stick around, we'll be right back. It's been over 150 years since Wells Fargo first opened for business. Since then, we've enjoyed your community support and we're passionate about returning it. Every day, Wells Fargo team members roll up their sleeves and donate their time to organizations and charitable groups throughout the Bay Area. Nationally, we've committed even more. In just the past two years alone, we've donated over $70 million to support schools and educational programs. It's a commitment we're proud of. Wells Fargo, the next stage. Welcome back. We're still joined by Mike Callagy, the incoming uh, county manager on November 1st. Uh, he has been the uh, assistant county manager for th since two, 2016 and was joined the county as deputy county manager in 2013. Let's talk generally. What is the state of the county? Not just county government, but the county itself. Is it in good shape? Is it suffering? Uh, is the boom uh, a blessing or a curse? It's a little both, to tell you the truth. It's, uh, it's been, uh, you know, some great times. Um, you know, we've, we're seeing unprecedented um, um, growth in our, in our taxes and our property taxes um, and, and a sustained growth year after year. Um, it's given us an opportunity to now update so many uh, buildings and projects that we, we didn't have the capital to do before. Um, it's, you know, we're, we're getting into different areas. We're uh, going to be really um, opening a, a park, our first beach park um, out of Tanitas Creek. Um, we've al it's allowed us, and we're doing some great things in the area of education with the big lift. We're seeing changes there with, with third grade reading proficiency and, and our foster kids and, and, and homelessness. 
The curse is that uh, it certainly doesn't apply across the board to everyone. There's a segment of society, uh, a large segment of society here in San Mateo that's being left behind. And, and our job is to really address that and, and make sure that there's a level playing field for everyone in this county. The county is changing. I mean, you, you grew up here. Um, it didn't used to be a center for jobs. And now there's a whole different economy here. And with it comes the traffic that we're having. With it comes the housing prices. Um, it, San Mateo County has changed forever, hasn't it? It really has. Um, there is no going back. I mean, you know, the last eight years or so, we've seen about 80,000 new jobs come into this county. Um, it's amazing, and, and you know we've only built about you know three or four thousand um, new homes associated with that, with that. Um, so you can see that that the curve is, is steep, and that you, you you know you see the housing prices. You know I think we're at 1.6 million um, now is the median price house mark in this county. When you think about that. Think about your average person who has to save around $200,000 to begin with, and then um, you know cover a loan that's about $7,000 per month, um, you know, for 30 years. You know, it, it's 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 difficult because you know I walk around uh, with, with my kids, uh, you know, and my wife every night, and and they wonder, um, will I be able to live here? And I'm sure many people wonder that. And it's heartbreaking to see families suffer, you know, literally month to month, wondering if they're going to be able to hang on and keep a roof over their head. Is the housing problem unsolvable? You know, we had John Maltby on our show a little while ago, and, and he said he didn't think there really was uh, the possibility of building enough housing to, to do anything more than sort of make a dent on the edges of this problem. You know, I think that we have to keep along those lines that we have to continue to build um, a housing, high density housing, the housing that makes sense. I mean, the Bay Meadows project, uh, I think we're going to see more and more of that where you, you know, where you live, you have linear parks, not necessarily a big backyard where you can shop right there, where you can, you know, drop off your laundry, get your groceries within walking distance. I think we're going to see a lot more of that. But, you know, there's home preservation um, that, that we have to continue to invest in. It's so much easier to keep people in than to try to find new housing. You know, we've got a, we've sorry, let me, uh, home preservation, meaning you know, take me, for example, I have a house, four bedroom house. I live in by myself. That's not helping the housing stock any, is it, by having me take up that much space? No, but that you know, but it, it provides a great opportunity um, for a lot of uh, seniors in our, in our community to to maybe rent out those those uh, those rooms um, and generate um, a little bit of income. I mean, we've got an aging population in this county by by 2050. You know, a third of the population in this county would be 65 years or older. Um, and, and, and I don't see those people necessarily moving out of the, the county. I'll certainly be included in that, uh, in that group. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but there's an opportunity there. And, and we have to keep investing in, um, in housing, in affordable housing. You know, the, the board has done a great job of putting a substantial amount of money away for, for housing. But it's never enough. You're, you're, we're going to have to look at it from, from a multifaceted standpoint and really look at transportation um, and invest in transportation. And uh, it's got to be, uh, you know, those things go hand in hand. Well, I don't think we're, we're ever going to be able to meet the demand that we're seeing in this county. But to the extent that we can provide, you know, fast and reliable transportation from the valley, from Sacramento, other areas like that, um, into San Mateo, and I'm talking within, you know, within an hour, um, that's a smart investment. So how important is this uh, measure on the ballot in November, the half cent sales tax increase funding for which would go to a variety of transportation projects and programs? It's important. All, all these measures, you know, the regional measure three, I mean, the voters passed, that's important. This half cent sales, sales tax will certainly be important. We have got to start investing in our infrastructure and in our transportation. Um, you know, you go around the world and you see very sophisticated transportation. We will need to get there um, in order to preserve the quality of life that, that we have here as we know it to keep the jobs here. Yeah. But, but it, we, we talked before about how the county has, not cha is, is, has changed and isn't going back. You talk about high density, you talk about uh, mass transit. Those are things of an urban setting. 
Um, is that what's happening? Is San Mateo County becoming more of an urban setting? It is, but it's a real dichotomy because we've got incredible open space here in this county. So you can have it, you can really have it all. And I think that's maybe what's so attractive about this county. You can be in a dense uh, uh, urban setting here and you can be out in the, in the redwoods in 20 minutes. I mean, that's what's so, it's so attractive to so many in this, uh, in this area. Yeah. Um, from housing to homelessness. Um, I, I know the county has made strides in that area, um, but especially as the economy and, and the cost of housing gets tougher and tougher, uh, it seems to me uh, we're seeing more and more, at least anecdotally, of people who are uh, panhandling and who are sleeping in open areas. It, is, is a, it's never a problem you solve, but is it, what is the status of our homeless situation in this county? Well, let's say you know, even one, uh, one homeless person on the street is certainly too many. Um, you know, everyone needs to be housed um, and, uh, and protected um, to the extent that they want to be. We're, we're, we're actually doing, um, I think, considerably well in, in, that, uh, in that realm. And um, our, our Human Services Agency, our board has put uh, a lot of money in this area. We're seeing the homelessness count in this uh, county come down uh, every year. Um, and, uh, you know, in part that's because of the, the HOT team, our homeless outreach team. It's a multidisciplinary team that goes out and really tries to rapidly rehouse uh, individuals that they find uh, that are homeless and, and to deal with the underlying causation. And, and a lot of that, uh, you know, it may be um, financial, it may be because of mental health issues or addiction issues, whatever it may be, but that multidisciplinary team comes together and is able to. Uh, it's my fault for asking such a complicated question with so little time left. Mike Callagy, thank you for being with us. And thank you for being with us and join us next time on The Game.